In this video, I'm going to assemble the Charlie Plexed 8x7 LED shield, which is what I used in this, and I'm going to be testing it with this Arduino. Basically, this can be used in any Arduino that has eight pins without gaps. So it doesn't work in an Uno, but it works in many other types. So the first step in assembling this is to take your resistors out of the packaging. and set them on your working surface. And I prefer to set them on the working surface face up. Okay. And then there are eight resistors here. So we tin one side of the resistor pads. And then using tweezers, solder the resistor onto each pad. Okay, then we check to make sure that they're all laying flat. And if they're not, we just touch up the solder because this is the easiest time to move them around. And then once all these are good, we solder the other side of, or the other pad. For all of them. And then I touch up just to make sure I have a good connection. And in this case, just as an example, I'm going to leave this one unsoldered so that you can see what it looks like if you have a bad connection when I test it later. But you're going to want to solder this too. Once these are all soldered, the next step is to cut the LEDs, the leads on the LEDs. So I take my clippers and I cut them at about this length. Um, and you want to make sure that the thickness of them, so sharp edge on this side, so that you have enough of a lead on the LED left that when you put it through your board, it sticks up about one centimeter. So should be just a little bit out of the board so you can get a good solder contact. ahead and dump all these out and chop off their leads. Making sure that every time I chop it, I use the right side of this clipper.
Now that we've cut all of the LEDs, the next step is to put them on the PCB. And you want to make sure that the flat side of the LED is aligned with the flat side of the silk screen. So you do that like this. For the first row, I'm just going to place a couple of these and then take tape and tape them and then flip it over so that I can just solder one side of each LED into place like this. And I usually just pick the square side or the square LED, square square pad actually, to just be consistent. It doesn't really matter. You just want one of the pads soldered, not both, because then it'll be easier to align later. And then I do that for the next four on this row. And if one of them falls out, or a couple of them fall out when you flip it over, that's okay. Just like this did, it might take a couple tries. It's particularly difficult to get the first row in. You can use a pen as a prop to Hold it up and tape across, flip it over, and that time it worked. And then just solder one pin. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of the LEDs, just soldering one pin and remembering to align the flat side of the LED with the flat side on the silk screen. Then we take the tape, we gently set it across all the LEDs, flip it over, and then we solder the square pin.
Now that we have one pin on each LED soldered, we need to go through and straighten these out. And if you look in this direction and in this direction, you can see, well, actually, it's very obvious from this way that you can see a lot of these are not in a straight line. So we fix that by just taking the PCB, holding it in one hand and leaving this finger free and pushing the LED with your pointer finger while you touch the solder or soldering iron to the, uh, to the pad, you let the metal become liquid again and then push it into the right direction. And you can feel when it's flush against the PCB. So I go through and I do that for all of the LEDs. And you want to make sure that you don't remove your finger too quickly because it takes a moment for the solder to resolidify. You want to clean your tip every once in a while just to make sure that it stays nice. Okay, when you think they're all aligned, I would recommend doing one last check and holding it at this angle and just making sure that all of the LEDs look like they're in a straight line. And then hold it in the other direction and make sure that all of them look like they're in a straight line. And when they're straight enough for you, then you go on to solder the other pad on each LED.
Okay, now that you've soldered both pins on every LED, we can do a preliminary check using a battery and the PCB. So I just want to check that all the resistors are correctly soldered at this point. So if the resistors are soldered, then every time we connect a high or a low, or basically connect two pins, we should get one LED to turn on. And right now, we're seeing that two of the LEDs aren't turning on. So that could indicate that we have the resistor that's messed up and we know that we were going to have a, a bad resistor because we didn't solder it intentionally just so I could show you what happens when one of the resistors isn't soldered. So that resistor needed more solder, and that resistor needed more solder. Okay, so all the resistors look like they are working because we're seeing an LED light up no matter which pin we have connected. So then we can go ahead and solder on the pin header. For this, I solder on one pin and then I check to make sure it's perpendicular to the PCB and that there isn't a gap between the header and the PCB. And then I solder all the pins on. Okay, now that this is soldered together, the next thing we do is test it using this program. So this one I know works. And what the test program is gonna do is it's actually lighting up one LED at a time in the correct order, or in a specific order. So, We put on our freshly soldered PCB. Which actually needs to have its header trimmed a little bit. So it'll fit on there. And I plug him in to A0, or actually, I think, no, it's not A. It's actually, I programmed it to be on either D2 or D3, so this needs to be trimmed as well. Connect it to the right pins. Hmm. 
Actually, this pen header, I cracked it, so I'm going to have to take it off. I'll be right back. So there was a problem with the female pin header, and so what I've done is I've actually cut the plastic in a number of places, and I'm going to unsolder this. And the problem was that one of the ones on the outside actually was bent so that when I was trying to plug it into the Arduino, it was actually making contact with a neighboring pin. So, now I've broken the plastic with pliers, or not pliers, with um, these snips. And now I'm gonna try and get this guy out of here. Probably use tweezers. Let gravity help me pull this guy out. Okay, so then we need to clean these holes and you do that by liquefying the solder that's stuck in them and slamming it on the table. And you want to do this on something a little bit soft because you can damage the LEDs. Well, not really damage, but scratch the plastic surface. Okay, now those are clean. We can put the new header on. So it's one too long. So I'm gonna clip it. And trim this extra part. And solder it again. Solder the one pin and then make sure it's aligned and in this case it needs to be fixed. So I align it better. So that this is at a right angle, it's a little bit off. Now you can see it's at a right angle, and we solder it more, or solder the rest of the pins. Okay. And now we should be able to test it. So we plug in our Arduino and then we clip it in to the right pins and we should see the LED. It's lit up just sequentially going through all the different LEDs. So it looks like all of these are actually correctly aligned or correctly oriented. But if you have an LED that in this program that two of them light up next to each other, but 
one of them doesn't light up. So, for example, if these two would light up together, but when one of these is supposed to be lit up and then neither of them lights up when the other one's supposed to be lit up, then you know that you have one of the LEDs backward. And if you do that, or if you have one of those, then you're going to have to unsolder the LED and put it back on. Or if the same is true if you accidentally had one that was a different color. So some of these are a slightly different, or like a yellowish white. So I'm going to pick one that I want to replace. So we'll go with this one. And what you're going to do is you take your LED, you heat up both pins at the same time. So sometimes it helps to put a large blob of solder on there until it falls out. And you throw that LED away. And then, or if it's a perfectly fine LED, it's just backward, you can put it back in. Um, then you liquefy this, slam it on the table, liquefy, slam on the table until it's clean, so, until the holes are empty. Then you take your new LED, making sure it's in the right orientation, and then stick it in the hole. Flip it over and solder it in place. And then sometimes it's not very well aligned. So you realize later you need to realign it. And when you do that, when you realize it after you've soldered both, you need to liquefy both pins at the same time. And just like you did when one pin was soldered, push it through with your finger and align it better. So now it's back in alignment. So that is basically the two common errors that you have with an LED Charlie Plex matrix display, basically that one of them's backward or that one of the resistors isn't soldered correctly. And so when one of the resistors isn't soldered, you're gonna get, well, on the back of this actually, I've labeled which pins each LED is controlled by. So if you realize that, for example, if all of the ones that have a three in them aren't soldered, then you know you have to replace R3. You have to re-solder R3. Um, also, if you end up having two when you run the test program that light up next to each other at the same time, then because of how I designed this, it means that you have one of them backward. The other thing is, when you're working with the Arduino, you can use any pin, but sometimes with the Chinese version of the Arduino, they have an LED, actually all of them have an LED that's connected to one of the pins, but with many of these Chinese off-brand um, Arduinos, you have to actually unsolder the LED if you want to connect this to, the, to that pin. And it's, for example, on this one I think it's on pin 13, digital 13. Um, but anyway, you just go and unsolder the LED and it should work. If the LED is still soldered, it will make which LEDs are lit up and how bright they are a little bit different and you'll need to debug it a little bit. Um, so I hope that helps when you're soldering this guy together. And if you have any problems, just leave a comment and I will answer. <laughs>